Yeah, first of all, I feel great about the results we delivered today. This is our first full year as Halion. So 8% organic sales growth was on the top end of our 6 to 8% upgraded guidance. Operating income 10.4% ahead of that rate. Very strong cash flow. It allowed us to get our leverage down to three times and announce an increase in dividend and a half a billion um, stock buyback today. So feeling very good about the business. Uh, as far as price volume, actually volume growth on the year was a bit different than what you would have seen in other consumer staple companies. So we feel good about that volume growth. We think it's a testament to the strength of our brands, the importance of health, and brands like Sensodyne and Advil and Centrum have just done really well in this environment. As we look at next year, we do, we do expect to see pricing in that 4 to 6% guidance, but we do expect to have volume growth on the year also. You mentioned the reliance on some of these power brands in the numbers today, but where do you see trading down potential down the track already we're seeing in other consumer goods? Could it happen in your business? Well, we're seeing very little trading down to date, and what I would say is um, private label, movement to private label is um, very minimal. It, not it, consistent across every category, but overall we've grown share versus private label. Um, and we've seen very little movement to generics where we have more of a pharmacy business in, in Europe. So overall, the categories have held up really well. And again, a testament to the importance of health for consumers. And in health, brands really matter. And I think that's made a difference in our numbers. At this point, I can't do the chapstick jokes with you anymore because obviously that's <laughs> on the table. But, 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 but my, my, my point is, is actually a serious one. Ever since yeah. I've been covering this sector and I, I went to yeah. the path to growth strategy for Unilever, I think it was year 2000, where they were rejigging their portfolio, you, ladies and gentlemen, in that sector can't resist rejigging your portfolio. What's, what's the big priority? There's always the next big thing. Where, you know, what is the next big thing for Hallium where you want to really want to hone in with the, the returns from the assets you're selling? Yeah, so first of all, we're, we've always said we want to do active portfolio management, and we love our portfolio, but can always benefit from divestments, both on M&A. Uh, Chapstick and Lamisil were the two divestments we announced, are, which is not strategic priorities for us. Mm. And we feel like we got very good value for them, so we created ver uh, shareholder value on, on those transactions. And then, you know, we will look to um, on bolt-on M&A if the opportunity exists out there, but the categories we're in are really strong, and we don't need to do anything to deliver on the organic, um, you know, guidance that we've given. Um, what happened at wreck -It was... Well, it was like a wrecking ball at wreck it shares yesterday, wasn't it? Um, why are their problems only their own problems and not your problems as well? Is there something more generalised going on that you're concerned about that actually is, is affecting the entire sector? Yeah, so I, wanna, I don't want to speak to exactly what's happening at wreck -It. Yeah. I mean, for us, listen, I feel like we've listed this company a year and a half ago. We've done an excellent job of separating from GSA, focusing yeah. on execution, and we've been able to execute. We feel like our portfolio is very strong with great brands. So the focus is really on continuing to deliver that quarter over quarter delivery and building the track record of results.